you turn this mic down then? <laughs> okay. Um, you are witness tonight to a very special moment in time. We are celebrating the end of Hawaiian History Month. And we have so many people to thank. Thank you. But at this point tonight, or and at this point tonight, I would like to um, mahalo my, my team, our teammates, Malia Nobriga, and this is my hello, some of our hello. I'm So we are gonna open with an oli, um, eulu. Makakao? Um, And I'm going to put my glasses on so that I can read the words a little bit easier. All right. Okay. Um, it's intimately connected to the legacy of the Hawaiian sovereignty of this beautiful Taina, as it was the capital and government building for the Kingdom of Hawaii. 2024 marks the 150th anniversary of Ali'iolani Hale's opening, a powerful place where history, tradition, value, have been made since 1874. On behalf of the King Kamehameha Fifth Judiciary History Center, we are honored and grateful to share space with you in this wonderful night. On January 17, 1893, a group of men supported by the American military quietly and hurriedly declared themselves a provisional government on the front steps of this hummer thus kicking off the saga of the kingdom's illegal overthrow. Tonight, we commemorate a profound community observance in which tens of thousands gathered over five days in January 1993 to reflect on the 100th observance of an overthrow and its legacy. The centennial observance was captured by David Kalama and crew from hours of footage documenting events, not only here at the, but at the palace grounds and sites throughout Honolulu um, Town's historic district. <laughs> Came alive through musical performance, prayer, historical reenactments, speeches by Hawaiian activists and formal cultural protocol. Where were you during that week in 1993? Just ruminate for a moment. I was in my 30s, <laughs> and I'm going to now just um, have you enjoy the film, and we'll have a conversation afterwards with David and, and other filmmakers here tonight. Thank you. Oh, wait, David, yes. <laughs> Aloha. Uh, Aloha. Nice and close. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say thank you to Meliana. I recognize her for she's a uh, beautiful dreamer and she dreamed up this event and said, Oh, well, by the way, you've got to go. So I said, Sure. Well, I wanted to 
also recognize Senator Eloise Tungpalan because she's a navigator who uh, steered the canoe where the event actually occurred. There's a lot of people involved, but she was the navigator. Um, I don't like to talk much about their films uh, unless they have to, but I wanted to do a couple of setups. So um, a lot of people don't realize this was not a one day event. It was one week. And some of the events started as early as 4 a.m. And there's a variety of events. And hey, uh, some of them didn't end until 9 or 10 p.m. So it was, uh, uh, for me, it was like one prayer ceremony after the other. Okay, thank you. Therefore, I, John Wahee, Governor of the State of Hawaii, do hereby proclaim January 13 through January 17, 1993, to be a time of remembrance and rededication, and do hereby order that on Friday, January 15, through Sunday, January 17, 1993, the flag of the Kingdom of Hawaii, Republic, Territory, and State of Hawaii shall fly alone over all the state of Hawaiian buildings in the capital district, Honolulu, Hawaii. But on a January day in 1893, the nation of Hawaii was invaded, the government of a kingdom overthrown, an act of war committed by the troops of the United States Navy upon the sovereign people of Hawaii. Lidia Kamaka Ehan Lili Uokalani Kelly Inohoa Puni. Kamo i wahini o Hawaii i nei. Keali i wahini o ko kako lahui Hawaii, ua kau oia i ka noho ali'i, ma hope o kamake ana, o kona kaiku ana, o kavika la amea kla kaua. Ma luna o kaloa ana o kona kulana, a mahope mai ua nui wale na noi. Ho olale i hola oia e ho okumu ki kuma kana mai hou no ki au puni o abai puni. O ke ia ho loli hou ana ona he mea i pai o ia e na poe i imi aloa a wale kala kou. O na mana hou ma o ki kuma kana mai e lau o ka maka hiki Hanele umi kumabalu kanabalu kumahiku. O ke kulana o ke kalai aina wapo maoli no. 
wa nui na poe i apono me na hololi ana o ke ali mahini ke kahi o lako a ole no i apono mai ka ho la la ana a me ke au puni i kula i ia ka i ho hele i ai i ke alo me na ho kua ino mai na lahui e a me amelika hui pu ia o ke ia muaku o ko kako au puni e ho o holo i ana i na mna o kupa a e na hanana o ke ia elimala a e One hundred years later, we Hawaiians gather to remember our history, to honor our ancestors, to preserve our legacy of a thousand years, to heed the prophecy of centuries. Anger and disappointment were not absent from those who gathered to hear the words of the Queen. But a bond of healing had transformed their rage into a common commitment to the sovereignty of a nation. School children and toddlers, families and office workers, Kamaaina from all the Hawaiian islands, Native Hawaiian homesteaders, Hawaii. And urban apartment dwellers, taro farmers and truck drivers, dignitaries and common folk, all distinctions erased, save for a common heritage. under which the loyal subjects of this kingdom have been subjugated, under which their voting rights have been stripped from them. These dreaded restrictions are going to be lifted. Everyone's talking about it. The Panaka Maoli throughout the islands are making their way to the Iolani Palace. Today, January 14th, 1893, Her Majesty the Queen will promulgate a new constitution. My dear people of Hawaii, I have listened to the thousands of voices of my people that have come to me, and I am prepared to grant their request. The present constitution is full of defects, as the Chief Justice will testify, as the questions concerning it have often come before him for settlement. It is so faulty, I think a new one should be granted. I have prepared one in which the rights of all have been regarded. The ceremony of the judiciary Ali Olani Hale was to commemorate the closing of the legislature by Queen Delio Okalani. The decree of providence and the constitution of the kingdom having called me to occupy the throne of Hawaii, it is my earnest prayer that divine assistance may be vouchsafed in the permanent exaltation and benefit of the man.
o ke ia lā nō, ua mōi mahinene, i hea i ke aha, kau kanabai, o ke au puni o habai, e ho maha. A he mana o paa, i loko ona, e ho o laha i ke ia kumu kanabai o. I think it's real interesting that things are proceeding at the same pace they did then, and that things seem to be as equally confused now as they were a hundred years ago. When I saw the black bunting on the palace, it hit me ever so much more. Um, I cannot lie. Very emotional for me. What a long, long road. Ua haabi oya inea palapala ikeaha kuhina. Na kuhina labinama iho ole ke kakau inoa anu. Nui na ole lo kuka kuka. Mali apaha he maka u ia. He ho o laha i neia kumu kanabai ho. I mean, who is Lee Wexler? Today, yes, she wants us to sign her new constitution today. Oh, does she think she is? Oh, God, she's got it in mind. As you may be aware, gentlemen, most of the native population is uneducated and has no concept of how to run a government. It sounded really ambitious, slightly outrageous, really challenging. I, and I, they asked me if I would write the script, and I said yes. You know, I, and one of the reasons I decided to do it is because I feel like events like this, performance combined with history, is really a powerful educational tool. Gentlemen, please come over here. What do you mean, spring out? You know that she has been working on this with Nava He, Nolan, and White since. Parker and Cornwall knew of her intentions before they were appointed. You knew as well. Now there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. I see. And yes, and they're just probably a little bit different from the way you do things in Germany and Greece. Oh, please enlighten us on the right way. A consensus of officials, of those with government experience. The government should be for the people. Not for itself. That's, you don't understand. It may not be legal. The way the Bannon Constitution was legal? Those were demanding, extenuating circumstances. What could be more demanding and extenuating than the voices of thousands of citizens? Things must be done through the proper channel. The Constitution of 1887. Yeah, the Bayonet Constitution. The Constitution of 1887 clearly states in Article 78. A ole i kaa ke kaona ho'o ino, he nui ka moku a hua o ka mo'i mahini. Ho'o hola manao i hola oia e ho'o paneke i ke ia ho'o laha ana. But she swore, we don't care. We want a new constitution. It's the voice of our people.
children suited to the wishes of the dear people. I was ready and expected to proclaim a new constitution today as a suitable occasion for my people. But with regrets, I say I have met with obstacles that prevented Return to your homes peaceably and quietly and continue to look toward me and I will look toward you. Keep me ever in your love. I am obliged to postpone the granting of the Constitution to some future date. I must confer with my cabinet ministers, and when someday, after you return home, you may see it received graciously, you have my love. And with sorrow, I dismiss you. Gifts of love, gifts of respect, gifts of pride and devotion. You know, I'm so happy that our people have come together to share their hookupu for the Queen. I recognize that not everybody may have the same path. At least there's a recognition that we're moving in unison. Our spirits are coming together. I think that's really beautiful. I can feel it, you know, everywhere I go. Of the ancient fire burning kapu, a rite which Queen Lili Uokalani inherited from her chiefly ancestor, Ivi Kaui Kaua. The torches were lit at midday on the first day to burn bright in day and night for 100 hours until the final hour.
In a way, we are making real the events of 100 years ago. And the fact that you see people doing what they did back then makes things more real for people nowadays. If they'd had video cameras 100 years ago, people wouldn't think of this event in such abstract terms. Well, we're here to do just about what you're doing, uh, to gather this information so that it can be glued together to tell the story of uh, what's happening here, uh, what, ha what happened in the past, and what's going to be, actually, what's going to be happening in the future. And so we step back to Sunday, January 15th, 1893. Mr. Stevens, let's say, Hypothetically, of course, that during this time of governmental instability due to the Queen's revolutionary actions, that the lives and property of Americans were in danger. My primary concern would be their protection. And if this provisional government happened to declare itself at that moment, should there be any suspicion of danger to American lives and property, of course, I would call on the troops. I wish to inform you officially that many of us in the American community are concerned for our safety. We feel it necessary to form some kind of committee for our protection. Something like a committee of public safety to protect our civil liberties. Now our families and families do what you must, gentlemen, for your protection. We hereby form a public committee of safety to ensure protection from the Queen's designs. Just the me. members of this committee are myself. Lauren Thurston, W.R. Castle, A.S. Wilcox, W.C. Wilder, C. Baltines, Henry Waterhouse, Andrew Brown, Mr. Glada, Henry Cooper, Mr. McChesney, Mr. Lansing, and Mr. McCandless. Well, the scene that we just witnessed is very emotional. The way that it was portrayed really showed how it was the intention all along of that group of Kauli businessmen to do away with the Hawaiian monarchy. And it's very emotional for us to sit here and, and watch that. I have been very moved by the play. I just, just walking on the grounds and being in the places that this all went down is, is quite moving. A hundred years ago, my family fought for the queen. John Kuakini Cummins went to jail for the queen. and. Uh, so for me, it's a personal commitment to uh, to be here to see that the wrongs of the past are right, made right, you know, by the American government. They're in awe about the whole thing. You know, there are a lot of things going on that are, are contributing to this being such a significant event. But the play is having an impact on people seeing the real thing and what happened. And and that's important to know because uh, that's part of our history, whether we like it or not, whether we accept it or not, uh, the overthrow was illegal. And as President Cleveland said, it was an act of war against a peaceful nation. Helehu lehu kaukania oi poe, nua kanaka i halabai, meke ko meke o palekana, i kahale koa o Honolulu nei. I ka hola e lima o ke ahi ahi. He hanele ka naono kumalua poe. Na ukali koa o Amelika mai ka USS Boston a pai i ke kapakai. Ua lako lako he na mea kaua. He ka naono mea kaua o ke koa pakahi. Hahai, ana i ka pū kaua, me umi kumaha kaukani lako kaua, a me ka pū kuniahi, me umi kumahiku haneli a eha koka pahu, wa nawe mai la lako i ka lepo momon o ka lahu i ka pai. Ka mua, mua hele lako i ka o ke ala ni mo i mahina. A huli a kula i ke ala ni pāku. A hele polo lei i hola o ke ala ni mo i kani. Ma alo maila i ka mua o ka hale ali.
Wakula ko ike kihi kihi hema o kahali iolani no ke kahi manawa. Kukulu a ilako mahali o ariona. Ma mua pono iho o hale ali iolani. A kau na maka ika hale ali. Basically, our school wanted to show our support in the um, commemoration for the 100th year of the overthrow of our monarchy. We'd like to um, see more young young people come out and support the cause and learn about what's going on because we we are the future and we have to um, stand up for what we believe in and we have to learn about what we about our history now. You're still overwhelmed with the joy to yeah. see so many uh, Hawaiians together. I think this is one of the greatest experiences that's happened to the Hawaiian community and in the state uh, in this decade, certainly perhaps in this century. Really, this is not history being reenacted. This is history in the making. Uh, you can feel the, the emotions of people coming out as they further understand and have the opportunity to share and experience what's going on. Being a 100% Hawaiian, you know, it's our time to come out and support the Doha and, and, and all the people here. Excellent. I mean, you can feel the mama inside. Yes. You can feel them. What is going on? What are all these people doing? So there's a problem. And we're trying to say, we, we remember us. This is who we are. It's about time that not only us Hawaiians, but other non-Hawaiians realize the true picture of what happened. Today, 
we have precedent. Today we go on into the 21st century with purpose. Oye ki kuma kilikia no ko poe hawai nui nui ko ka po kilikia po kilikia no ka mea aho e ka ko e aina no aole la ka ko e ka hapano la ka ko a hiki ka ko e e kamio ka ole lo po no i o ka i aina ni oye ka kilikia a ole i like loa ka mana o ki kahi me ki kahi a ka he he mama na o ko apa ko kako pakahi apa o kiliana i ko kako muaku ay ano na e he lahi ko kahi na ho ikako malam na ho ikako ikela man na o a o he mea e kono oni yoy ikako. For more than 100 years, the Hawaiian people have suffered because the life of the land is not for me. For some, it is economic. For others, it is social. And for many, it is political. But for all Hawaiians, it is spiritual. We are here to prepare the Lili Guava show of my Queen Lili Okalani in 1893. A wrong has been committed. Not only did Hawaiians come, but Maori, Tahitians, Cook Islanders, Tongans, all wanted to come and lend support.
The Ava ceremony is the traditional ritual of drinking Ava in honor of our ancestors as a source of strength and guidance to respect each other, to speak and share the wisdom of the day. Komike Palikana, Mahale Ali Iolani, Eku Kalai, Keokuni Ho Ku Ikama, Ho Noho Ia of Sanford B. Doe, Kapeliki Kena. We took the position as president of the provisional government. Congratulations, Mr. Doe. Ikea <laughs> But I think the highlight of my whole life will never ever happen again in this life.
thousands and thousands of people marching for justice for the Hawaiian people from all walks of life, many, many, many Hawaiians and many, many non-Hawaiians who support justice that our people rightfully deserve. the march entered the palace grounds, various speeches were given by the many groups and organizations. For the entire day, well into the twilight, each speaker was followed by another and another. The United States does not recognize independence. Independence for the way we are right now. The native people of the Hawaiian Kingdom yielded to superior force under protest. I will apologize for the involvement of some of those who preceded us in the unprovoked invasion of the Hawaiian nation on this day, 1893. And the God for God. We're serious that it's not a carnival. This is not a pageant that we're for real. We are native e Hawaiiau, mau a mau. We are Hawaiian for now and forever. <laughs> So many people having brought pohaku from all different parts of the different islands and there's um, a lot of presence and power in each of these rocks and to see them all brought together I think it's very symbolic to see so many peoples here being brought together. I think the educational aspect of it is for me the most moving part of this entire event. <laughs> eat the stones, and that's what gives us our sustenance and our spiritual energy to rebuild our nation. So this ahu here represents that rebuilding of our nation right here, and it is a sacred site and shall remain so. Hawaii includes all of our islands and all of our people and for too long the island of Lanai and the island of Niihau have been left out as well as the whole Olave so I'd like to remind us to, to embrace all our islands and all of our people. This whole thing is an awesome experience for us. We just arrived from Kauai the other day and already we feel the flowing of the mana here. Um, of course we brought ours with us too. The 
actors are so good that you, when they walk past you, you actually want to hit them. You don't get so angry. <laughs> but that only shows that they're doing such a good job. We love our kingdom. We love our queens. And we love the land that gave us birth. Participate. I participate every day. This is a morning you know, time, but yet it's a happy time because uh, we're, you know, we're close to getting uh, something good. about our culture, our people, and about the overthrow. There's a lot of different kind of people here, from the grassroots to politicians, the rich people, poor people, but they all came for one purpose. I'm just down here today to be with my, my brothers and my father, and just uh, to feel Hawaiian. You, know, you come down here and you see all these Hawaiians here. I, I've never been in an area with so many Hawaiians. I have never in my 66 years ever experienced any beautiful. I've been with many things. I've been at the Bishop Museum 15 years. Uh, we made the banners for the first two trips to the Hokulea. But, you know, with so many wonderful things that we've done, it doesn't compare to this one. here supporting the programs that are going on and I think that it's inspirational and I think this really can be used as a foundation for the future. When all of our events are completed here, we close this chapter and we move on to another level. But they got to recognize first that we are here, sovereign. Then everything else will fall in place. I think the process also has to be framed in solid values values of how we're going to move through this process together, how we're going to treat each other in the process, mutual respect, care, humility on all of our parts, being willing to let go of some things so we can move on and we don't get stuck. There is a, a lot of hurt and the people need to understand uh, where we was and where we are today. And, uh, and like you said, you know, look, uh, study the issues of, of sovereignty real well before it and make a real good decision. Our dear people, hear these words of mine that I say to you in this hour, hour of darkness. Hold your heads up high and be proud, for each and every one of you has much to be proud of in yourselves and in your people. Hold fast to that love and dignity and pride you have for your heritage and your country. Yes, your country, your nation, Onipa. Hold fast. Namoi Wahini represented our culture, our legacy, and that's what they stole. You know, as a person, she was Eha. And I understand that. And I can relate to her pain. What we need is the land. We get the land, we can survive. We did it before, we can do it again. And it's crucial. It's crucial to our survival. Not only the survival of Hawaiians, but to the survival of Hawaii as a Hawaiian place. Without Hawaiian, you don't have Hawaii. So it's a very serious matter. I well knew 
that resistance would only result in the many deaths of my own people. I could not call my troops to what would become their certain slaughter. No, this I could not do. After consulting my advisors and with the help of Mr. Paul Newman, I wrote a letter to Mr. Dole, yielding to the United States of America, not the provisional government. Trusting that when that nation learned the true facts of this case, they would restore the kingdom of Hawaii. I just marvel at the purpose in this woman's life that she can take a time of confinement when someone might otherwise be experiencing personal despair and out of it do something positive. I mean, she's the greatest role model we have. I need to walk alone by the grace of God and under the constitution of the kingdom queen do hereby solemnly protest against any and all acts done against myself and the constitutional government of the Hawaiian Kingdom by certain persons claiming to have established a provisional government of and for this kingdom, that I yield to the superior forces of the United States of America whose minister plenipotentiary, His Excellency John L. Stevens, has caused United States troops to be landed at Honolulu and declared that he would support the said provisional government. Now to avoid any collision of armed forces and perhaps loss of life, I do under this protest and impelled by said force Yield my authority until such time as the government of the United States shall, upon the facts being presented to it, undo the action of its representatives and reinstate me in the authority which I claim as the constitutional sovereign of the Hawaiian Islands. Ko kako aina a ole loa e malama iana, malalo ona poe Hawaii i ke ia mua aku. Ahi au ho ka ihiki maila, ahi manawa loli ke ia. Ameke kakali ana. Because of these wrongdoings, we must be deeply committed to a better future. And we must have within our hearts and minds a burning desire to take up the task and move forward and regain what is rightfully ours. Oh boy, all the way, look that way, right, buddy? All the way, buddy. By following the plan laid down 100 years ago by our Mo'i Vahine, Queen Lili'u O'Kalani. Oni Pa'a.
Yes, you. We we not rehearsed, but we met this week talking. And perhaps you could start us out because actually the reason I invited these young ones. our way um, is because these young ones are the age I was a few years older but not many uh, than, than the gentlemen here the young ones and some sale was not even born um, when in 1993 she's just 26 so I, I want to say that for all of them their charge is to continue to do the work so I'd like them, um, Kavika, as you have conversation with the audience and think about your questions, but I'd like to ask each of you for just a short window about um, what you saw and experienced and how that relates to uh, today. If you could start us, David. Sure. Uh, so I hope you have Hair, get pissed off or something. Uh, that was the goal to get a reaction. And uh, I last saw it, uh, I think a year and a half ago or something. And uh, I'm pretty happy that I can, I still cry every time I see it. So I'm pretty happy. So I hope you enjoyed it too. Uh, uh, Drew and Sansi, I just met uh, two hours ago. Uh, I and I have known for quite a few years. I, I hire him a lot. He does a lot of filming for me, uh, he directs for me and stuff. And he is a filmmaker of his own. Uh, you probably heard of his uh, film, he'll talk about it, called Lobby and George Helm. So it's good to have young people uh, pick up, because uh, you know, uh, Kupuna and uh, what I, uh, I remembered uh, in the film is all those Kupuna who have gone, uh, who we saw in the film, uh, Still saw them in our hearts, and uh, so. so anyway, I know. Um, thank you for having me uh, on this panel with you folks today, and Mahalo Kalama for um, showing, uh, making that film, and also hiring me occasionally. Um, I think uh, this is my first time watching this production. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit and talked about the moment, I think. I was there as well uh, in 1993 on my dad's shoulders. I kind of um, mostly just remember the sea of red and the energy. Um, not really, I don't think, understanding uh, exactly what it meant to all of us. And so thank you for capturing you know, this and being able to have it live in its, its form and um, all that energy. And yeah, allowing us to time travel on the way back to that moment. Um, kind of the takeaway I think I just got mostly from this last um, third act was the, uh, what really the foundation of the event and the moment was um, the hurt and anger and, and the pain that us being coined together in all types of ways, you know, especially through art or the artisans um, in some of those shots and um, the practices like the Aho building and the unity, all of those things that kind of give us joy and sense of um, identity, uh, but in, a, in such a scale that we all, uh, we all were there if you were alive and home, you know, and think that. I've seen that replicated, and I think I just wanted to, I think, honor the brave people of that time, all of the people that organized it and that spoke and um, attended, that just was, um, needed to unify. And I think, you know, seeing iterations maybe of it in, in these past few years, especially, uh, I think Lahaina comes to mind a little bit in terms of the quickness that we care and the deepness that we care for each other. And um, I think as storytellers, um, the way that we're 
the way that we at least are there to capture it and ideally, you know, bring it back to life through through a film. Um, but really, you remember those kupuna that had passed to see some of the people that are still alive and some of our teachers and even, you know, maybe there's a shot of myself, you know, and then to be able to lock that moment in. And, um, continues though, every single, you know, and so there's, it's our jobs to, to be there, uh, capture, tell the story, and inspire. And so thank you. How's it going, everybody? My name is Drew, uh, artist, curator, educator. Grew up in Mokapu. I live up in Pu'ohia now, and I work in, uh, on the slopes of Leahi, Kalahu, at Kapi'onani Kapi College. Uh, like I know, I'm grateful to be here tonight uh, with all of you um, to have a chance to watch this film and reflect on not just... Um, what happened in 1893, but also what happened in 1993, and what's happening right now in 2023. Uh, much of the work that I do is guided by folks like Nancy Mellon, my sister, my father, my siblings, Timanu, and Timuana, and Timuana, and Okumawi. And so I feel like there's, um, whenever you have a chance to acknowledge family, it's important to do so. And I think a lot of the work that we all do depends on family, on friends. So, uh, you know, in, uh, looking for the state, we have to declare conflicts of interest often. But it's just beautiful to be in a space where we can um, acknowledge relationship and see those relationships through a film like Kwanipa and the way that they come together to uh, move us in a certain direction. A certain in time. Um, Watching the film tonight, I was really uh, moved by the kind of multi-eyed perspective that you folks took. I know there were a number of crews, a number of cameras. I just think about all the different ways that we can tell a story and how sometimes we're encouraged to only tell it from one perspective. But in this film, in only Bob, we see so many different perspectives uh, of that event. Uh, and I'm referring to 1993. Uh, not to 1893. And that was really powerful for me to, uh, as, a, as an aspiring filmmaker, to sort of witness um, those risks that you folks took in telling this story and kind of deviating from the expectations of uh, a cohesive narrative to give everybody a chance to be present on screen to show all of the different things that are taking place and to weave that all together uh, into uh, 60 plus feature is uh, pretty amazing. So thank you for that. Happy to be here with all of you. Aloha kako. I'm Sansia Miala Shiba Nash. Um, I'm from Kihei, Maui, and I live in Pohia, here in Oahu now. And of um, tapes and while I was watching this film, it really made me think of how um, Auntie Jordan Pumipo's work and um, Uncle David, um, their work, how one of Yeah, I was thinking, 
think that's something that comes to mind for me is um, in nation building, how do we all form all together? For me, as, as a Hawaiian young 30 years ago, I was terrified to be a part of any of this because I understood so little. I want you all to know that if you have that sense of dread or, or discomfort at not knowing, I'm not going to say it's not our fault, but I'm going to say it's because of the purposeful, systemic misinformation information um, that and lack of information that all of us had while at university and in high school none of this was taught to me so you can appreciate the changes that have come about at this point in history where so many have access where this was not the case 30 years ago so I just want to honor everyone that you've seen, so many of these people. My teachers, whether it's Hale Makua or Sam Pa'ai or Auntie Malia Craver, who did the, the, uh, the narration, or so many of those others, we all helped each, each other. other. And whether you knew an auntie or uncle or Kumu or not, you could always depend on them for being there for you. And I just want to let the young ones know that we are here for you as well. That David has taught all of us so much. Sorry, dude, you're old now. Nah, just kidding. Um, but I would love to ask if you all feel that film has that capacity or creativity has the capacity to because we always has the opportunity to not only be reflective, but also to uh, empower and enable others. So if you could just share a novel about that, like, that would be a good thing for folks to hear. Okay. Um, <laughs> so there's a couple of rules when you make films, uh, any kind of storytelling, I guess. Uh, and there's maybe two basic rules. Uh, what's the story and who's the audience? So once you define those, you'll figure out uh, how you're going to proceed. Uh, so uh, as uh, Drew was mentioning, uh, it's not an explainative uh, film. And I decided early on, there's just too much going on. It's uh, what am I going to do? So uh, I didn't do it as a regular film. I did a uh, video painting. So... That's how I conceived it. Uh, it wasn't really your structured type of structure, except that there was some sort of chronology and I moved events around many years where I put it. So that somehow it moved along and uh, uh, started to work out. And uh, you have to worry about making sure, okay, is it slowing down too much? Okay, we're gonna speed it up. Okay, so we'll mess around and things like that. So you keep the... Uh, viewer engaged and there's an old film technique which is um, you got to say everything within one reel and one reel was the old days where it was film and it would be somewhere between six and ten minutes long and then you can change your subject so uh, those kind of rules still apply because that's how people react uh, so uh, you got to tell your story in six to eight minutes and then move on to the next sub story so you can have a lot of stories but Really, there's only one story. So I decided, well, uh, this was a contracted work. Uh, I was hired to do this. It's not my own invention. And so I said, okay, well, they want me to capture the event. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to capture the event. So early on with that style uh, of how I'm going to approach it, I decided, okay, uh, we have to have a voice, some sort of narration. And so who should it be? Uh, it's the voice of Hawaii. And so okay. oh, what kind of voice is definitely female. So I said, okay, uh, we should have uh, each generation, the Kupuna, the Makua, and the Opio. And so that's why we had those three different voices and the 
kupuna, of course, was completely in Hawaiian, and that was uh, Eti Malia Craver, another great. Uh, and uh, the uh, makua was uh, uh, Miha Suza, her uh, cousin. And the uh, Opio, I forgot her name. You, she was, I think, 14, something like that. <laughs> So we got her uh, through Kamehameha Schools and took care of all the paperwork so we could have somebody who was not an adult uh, participate in the film. So uh, from there, uh, we just kept on going. Uh, uh, it was, even though officially it was five days of events, uh, there were a lot of unofficial events. So it was definitely a whole week. Um, and we had... Uh, I had seven crews. Uh, some crews were only two people, some were three. Uh, one was four, so I had about 21 people uh, filming uh, the event, and it was all video. It's all four, three in those days. HD uh, was still uh, 10 years away. Uh, so, your turn. Um, my first uh, film teacher at the University of Hawaii at Manoa um, Academy for Creative Media, just kind of when it, it started, um, I was lucky enough to study under a uh, filmmaking pioneer uh, from Aotearoa, uh, Merata Mito, and kind of one of her lessons, um, kind of paraphrasing, but uh, if your film is in healing, then why are you doing it? And I think, you know, she's kind of been dubbed as uh, the godmother of indigenous cinema. And I think that's true for a lot of our indigenous films is that, you know, through uh, what we've all lived through or experienced generationally, um, internally, I guess, and, and how we adapt in, in our day and age. Um, each film, seems to at least address that pain and, and hurt and um, find a way to at least uh, ask the audience or explore with the audience what, you know, healing looks like, how, how they feel at the end of the film. Um, I guess it's like a good time to talk about a uh, short film that I made, which is Hawaiian Soul, about George Helm and Koho Olave and that movement that I wasn't uh, alive when it happened, but was uh, inspired by this man and thought that he is an excellent role model for us today, especially Hawaiians. And through working with his family and really needing to have their blessing, otherwise, you know, um, there was no other way, I think, to, to make it. Um, the goal became, yeah, bring some healing to, to this family, you know, regardless of whatever the film does outside of those people. That this is the, the target audience, the, the goal in which we should um, anchor this film in. And so whenever any of those questions of like uh, structure or um, form that, I always had to kind of revert back to, you know, what feels good or what I think will help them, uh, I don't know, feel proud and bring some, some closure, maybe. Not necessary closure, but I think allow them to speak about their brother or their uncle in a way that is not so heavy. And um, I was just proud to think of that. And I think when all of us, as, uh, I want to, categorize maybe indigenous filmmakers, I think there's, uh, you can see it, you know, that's something that Hollywood wishes they had, you know, but when you're of a culture and um, you're making your film for your people, regardless if it still makes sense to outside groups, that was an authentic audience, um, which maybe doesn't do well, you know, in Hollywood, but I think, uh, yeah, personally, it doesn't matter to me. You know, this is the place that I uh, want to make the most impact. 
and um, and I, yeah, I think it's to these like healing themes at least for now. And I think also though, uh, being able to after like I said, I mentioned the uh, final act of the film was like one of the happy moments. What, the, what is the joy that we're all actually feeling? What makes us proud to be Hawaiian? Um, and seeing that, and so wanting to also get there past the, the trauma and the healing. So want to have you all appreciate that a lot of the stories that we're doing or have been done are purposeful to the soul of us, the collective, whether it's Kamalavi that David did as well, whether it's Rikwagi, whether it's Purita, whether it's um, Hawaiian soul. So these pieces are made for the collective. They're made for all of us, and that's really important. We have a question right here from Eloise, yes. In 30 years, and I was wondering, one question comes to my mind. As she mentioned, Hawaiian history was never taught to us. You know, what everything else is Yeah, for sharing with the students throughout our state. You know, it doesn't matter if it doesn't make Hollywood. What matters is that our people know what happened. When you look at our people, unfortunately, they're on the bottom. You know, they rank highest in the prisons, you know, they, their, their socioeconomic status. They don't make it in their homeland. So what the question in my mind is, is this history being taught to you now, what you saw? Did you study this in school? Because we didn't. That's what I Yeah, we want to know you guys. Okay. True? Me first. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So it just so happens that I am a long uh, history of Kauai Hau people. Uh, my grandfather was the uh, janitor there, and at the age of 13, uh, they used to live right over there. They used to call that area Maluhia, all the, the church mission houses and everything. Anyway, it was present at the events, so I was lucky enough to have my grandfather tell me what happened, first person. So I didn't get it diffused from any other source. And unfortunately, because he told me, and I loved him, of course, uh, he told me, and then I went to school, Stevenson, and they did have a class where we're going to talk about Hawaiian history, and I, there was a book, and there, I was reading, and I stood up, and I raised my hand to the teacher. I'm sorry, uh, this is all wrong. Uh, this didn't happen this way. This, uh, no, no, it's not, no, no. You, you have to change the book. <laughs> oh, oh, how, what do you mean? My grandfather was there and he told me, and this is not what happened, so you have to change the book. I was sent to the principal's office for uh, misbehaving and I was suspended for two days. And I don't remember exactly that age, but uh, I believe a month later I was transferred to Kona Nakua. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know if that was exactly the reason why, but anyway, um, if you're lucky enough to have a kupuna who can re uh, share with you, and a kupuna shared with me many years ago that history is only 25 years old. It's the time from one generation to the next. If you don't tell the next person, they don't know. Nobody will know. So you always have to share your history. Uh, and so uh, it should be in every school, and there should be more recognition. And uh, it's, uh, um, it's a socio-political uh, problem. However, uh, the problem is uh, real.
And so it must be faced, uh, and we have to face it uh, emotionally, logically, and uh, for the betterment of the future whole of everybody involved. And really, the only way for Hawaii to uh, really do well is uh, Hawaiians uh, must begin to do well. If not, then Hawaii will not do well. Uh, Hawaii will uh, continue to suffer uh, this pain. And, and as Senator Eloise Tangpalan said, that was something that uh, I noticed that there is this pain and all and in the making of the film and all these people just showed up. I think uh, I estimate 40,000 people showed up and they're not all uh, strictly organized. They're all loose organized biker gangs, truck gangs, uh, high school kids, uh, intermediate school kids, uh, societies, homesteads, all the different uh, Polynesian cousins. So uh, people just decided to show up. And uh, why? Why do they all just decide to show up? Because they want to touch uh, their kupuna. That's what they wanted to do because somehow they wanted to heal. If only for a day or a few hours, they wanted to be able to heal and then go back to their regular life and be in pain again for the next decade or whatever. But it's, um, it's a problem that uh, continues, it never stopped, and it will never stop until it is resolved. And you can appreciate that all of us have different points of view. So, David, I always spend a lot of time in the editing in the dark. And we had conversations about all sorts of things. The, the important part, too, is to understand that this notion of wakawalu, ikimakawalu, points of view that are diverse, that, that's how these collective projects happen. And, and before we have two more questions, I'd love to thank you, David. That, that's very powerful just to hear from you. And it's great to hear from the primary source. Here he is. So it's fantastic. Drew, how do you feel about media? Because you're not just asp aspiring in film, but you do so many other things. How, what is your um, connection to the story on your program to be steadfast? Maybe just to stick to what we've already opened up in terms of healing and then are we learning anything different now and then maybe what form it comes in i think what we don't learn in the classroom we learn in our families and in our communities and those lessons are often way more important than what we're being taught in the classroom that said thanks to you, you folks and the work that you've all been doing for decades now we have educational programs that we can teach in the classroom uh, that we can share with the next generation of students. And the Makoka Aina is uh, another amazing resource. So yeah, we are learning what was not being taught uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago. We're learning that absolutely from a young age uh, through our family, through the school system and through community. I think we're in a different place now. Uh, we've been you know, overly optimistic, but that's what I feel every day when I go to work at Kupola. Um, in terms of the form that healing happens, I can't really speak to that. But what I can speak to is uh, that question of awareness. I think that's the first step. And that's what I try to support through the work that I do. Raising awareness and then the healing happens in whatever ways it happens. I don't know if you want to add anything um, or if Auntie Melly wants to ask questions from the audience. But I'd, I'd love to have Sansia because um, this is a, a, a brilliant young filmmaker, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I'm supposed to give a, a, a mic to somebody to move, and also to let this, yeah. So, okay, great. Sansia, if you could just share some thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, the power of cinema is really in the way that it builds bridges. It builds bridges and the future and um, between places and between people as well. And so I think um, all of these like 
classrooms felt that it's like a lot of dialogue and a bit more audience. That felt because there was, there was a need and you were trying to speak to future generations. And I think um, in some way the prophecy has started to unfold. And you know, you know that I'm part of the prophecy. You know, my mom had a lot of my life in words, more, you know, in words, more in history, was more celebrated. And um, I think that we're just beginning to. Um, our consciousness as a collective, as a Lahori, is really growing and expanding. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have a couple of questions. Um, I was, yeah, hold on. We have one, two, three, four, five in the back. Okay, fabulous. Great there. Oh, oh, oh. thanks, Malia. Kia ora, tēnā koe. My name is Alex. I'm from Aotearoa. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, my, I guess I'll start with Hollywood, the idea of Hollywood, and this beautiful story that we have uh, just watched. The the idea of the the overthrowing of Hawaii is such a powerful story that deserves to be told all over the world. So my question to you all, especially the newer, um, the new coming filmmakers, what's, what's the end goal for you? What's, what's the dream? Well, Alex, um, It's Hollywood. <laughs> no, not like not not to be like uh, to, to to say that what I'm doing isn't um, what needs to be done. I think. Well, um, I guess for example, uh, Alex is in media or uh, television, and is. Through his Aotearoa roots and acting training, has made his way into uh, a film or a television show here, and which is a part of Hollywood. Several others, just like him, <coughs> um, a lot of household names, I, I would say, in, in Hollywood are like Taika, that have um, passed. Uh, not passed has climbed to, you know, roles of executive producing other people's, their friends, indigenous people shows so that they're hitting at a mass, uh, critical mass, I think, in terms of native storytelling, which has never been seen before. And I made the quip about how uh, it doesn't matter to me what Hollywood's approval, but I think when you're in the film, industry it's that's the the valid the the, the pie the, the level at which everyone sounds or, or that your stories are being seen you know and so if uh impacting hawaii and then making a local broadcast television show that had you know kind of whatever it is that my voice i think is a strong step um, but really the the way in which media gets uh, consumed in this kind of mass way is the, is still what you want, right? Your voice to come through and share people's voice and, <laughs> and change people's hearts and consciousness about Hawaiians and who we are and how we are dealing with what we're dealing with. Um, I like I'm pointing at Res Dogs and how as a native television show that maybe hasn't uh, really uh, hit critical mass in terms of outside native viewership, but has the most representation in terms of how I feel as a native person I've ever seen in like a, a, a Hollywood studio. Um, 
program organization. Anyways, I think um, maybe I'm backtracking a little bit as what I said earlier, but I think it still still means that I want to represent us and our people as best and as strong as possible, always with them in my heart, but at the same time wanting to impact as many eyeballs as possible. Do you, um, either Drew or Satya, want to respond to that? I think, I think we not only have to question the content, but also the form of storytelling that we need to do. Because um, we get too active. We look to Hollywood for things like, oh, like, this is how you make a movie. It's like a narrative arc. And this is like a progression of what a story is. But um, I think if we can look to storytelling, and also our approach to storytelling, how we um, have Pilina with people that we make films with, how we collaborate with people. Um, Barry Barclay, who's um, a filmmaker from Aotearoa, um, speaks about spiritual guardianship. And, um, you know, when someone gives you their image, it's their image um, throughout the generations to come. So it's not your image to, to keep. It's an image that gives back um, maybe two, three generations afterwards, but it's always theirs. It's never your own, right? And um, I think if we can move forward in filmmaking in a way that doesn't try to replicate Hollywood, I think that's really important. Um, and yeah, I think we think a lot about content, you know, about content. How do we tell different stories, right? But how do we, how do we even be different stories? Let's to add to that. I'm not a filmmaker. I make films. Um, the films that have been the most meaningful for me to collaborate on and be a part of have all been no budget films. When um, the more money that is available, the more problems that arise from my very limited perspective. So for me, um, the dream is one thing, but how we interpret the dream is another. And, uh, what funds we have when we're interpreting that dream push us in different directions. So uh, hopefully I get to be a part of more dreams that uh, are rooted in relationships and not in money. Yeah. I have one other thing to say. Um, Auntie John and Pohi Paul, oh, when they made the Mahoka Aina, what their dream was filmmaking in their eyes would speed up the process for sound That's really well said. I appreciate that. We have a couple more questions I'd love to. And by the way, there is Ono Grimes um, shortly. So we, we're going to try to see if we can get one or two more questions. Um, yeah. Downstairs. Yeah, afterwards. Question. Hi. Oh, loud. Sorry. Um, you guys have spoken to the fact that um, the goal is to share stories, to share knowledge, to share histories. As an OPO, what do you want us to do with this knowledge? That you aim for sovereignty that Anake uh, and, and Anakala have, like, you know, made films like Namako Aina, Really, really awesome films that have, like, as a uh, Hawaiian studies um, student at Manoa, like, just opened my eyes to so many different things. Even, like, as a student at Waianae High School, like, watching Namako Aina really cemented in my mind that, like, the overthrow was illegal and illegitimate. The 
occupation of Hawaii is ongoing. What do you want us to do with that information, and how do you suggest that we heal? As as a youth, like I'm saying, like I'm an OPO organizer. Tell me, tell me what the what the goal is, and I guess like, what is the bandage for this wound? Deeper, what what is the wound, and is the knife out of whatever, or is the cause of that wound removed yet? And if not, how how do we remove it? Thank you. Okay, you guys, go for it. <laughs> okay, excellent question. Um, here's my uh, perspective. Um, every person feels this pain in their own way. And so uh, the um, solution has to come from them for their pain. There will be some similarities uh, which show, yeah, that's the way I can do similar like that. But ultimately, it's your pain, you decide. And as far as uh, telling stories, uh, our job is to uh, instigate, uh, try and affect change, uh, change your mind, or at least bring something to light you didn't know, uh, make you laugh, make you cry. Uh, just to get a reaction, and it's up to you to decide. Individually, create a group, have a group decide what they're going to do. You make that decision. But uh, if uh, we get you to cry, we did pretty good. <laughs> Any of you guys want to comment on that? Because what I'm going to say is, my job is not to tell you the answer. My job is for you to go look for it. And, and then it'll become part of you. And that, as an educator, is so critical because so so much today is spoon fed to you guys. You know, it's like really, I much rather just show you your pool and you sit and swim. Let's see how well you swim. And that's I come from a generation where our kumu was like that. I mean, you had a day to to figure out something, and the next day you were gonna have an oli to to learn and present. So we we come from different generations. But I'm hopeful that the continuity of that integrity and that courage comes through to you folks because with all this media you, you can pick anything and my, my thing is digest and figure it out and then ask questions be curious all of that stuff is really important not to for, for us to tell you the answers yeah and i know we we um there's food downstairs but i know there are more questions any you guys want to respond to that sorry real fast i guess um, <laughs> We haven't figured out sovereignty yet, so that would be awesome if you could help us do that. And then, so, yeah, well, I, I was in this room, I don't know, I think it was for the 125th anniversary um, commemoration, and the organizers had put something together. They walked from Mona Hala down to the palace, and there was a lot of us there, and they continue to do this on uh, January 17th. And, but I remember that specific year, I felt um, this kind of turmoil inside that it felt like we were celebrating um, the worst day in Hawaiian history. And I, as a young person, put it on Instagram <laughs> and boldly said those words and, and um, hashtag uh, Onipa'a 125, Onipa'a 150, Onipa'a 500. 500. And so Onipa'a must mean like spinning in circles because it doesn't feel like we have anybody back in there, you know, and um, I still feel that way. I think maybe that was rude to the organizers for saying something like that because watching this and the joy, again, that kind of came through of us being born and not forgetting that day, remembering it, and um, coming together because we don't often come together. Um, those things are important, but I think, um, yeah, let's let's get back somebody in, in there, you know. What can will we ever see that day? It's important for you all to know that there was there has been a paradigm shift because I'm so over uh, observing an overthrow, which is why in 2006 I sweet talked our beloved Kumu into celebrating Lulu's birthday. I figured if Mahatma Gandhi and all these other folks get birthday celebrations, why not Lili Kalani? So honestly, in 2006, that is what that Hawaiian History Month. Before it was Hawaiian History Month, it was Onipa'a, and it will always be Onipa'a, because that is what we all need to do. And as we have not given our sovereignty up, 
our nation will be again. I mean, you have to be hopeful. You have to imagine. And that's part of my kuleana as a filmmaker and an artist, is to be able to say, hey, um, let us imagine the radical things. Yeah? Let us imagine the radical things. You guys have any comments or response? Anything else? Just a real quick one. Political sovereignty is one thing. Self-determination is another. And the latter is something we can do every day. So I think that's where part of the solution that you're looking for uh, lives. And maybe another part lives in the shirt that you're wearing. Yeah, land back. That's all. That's all we want. Thank you. There's a question right here as well. Young oh, man, <laughs> you get to be a young man, okay? <laughs> I'm Keola Kauhane um, from Palama. Um, I work in the DOE, in the Hawaiian Studies Program, in the Office of Hawaiian Education. So this is the first time I saw this film. Um, yes, it did affect me. Uh, Kavika, and um, so I know you said one of your questions is um, who is your audience? And uh, my position, um, looking at Hawaiian studies, kindergarten to 12, my wonder is, you know, at what age do you think this film would be appropriate? Uh, what grade level? Um, because I think this is a film that all KK need to learn. I'm part of that same generation that didn't know a lot of this, right? So uh, this would be important. Mahalo to all the filmmakers. Um, you guys are doing your part, right, to do that. Mahalo to Dr. Ron Williams there. I'm um, in all of his research, uh, primary resources. Um, mahalo to all those who have translated Hawaiian newspapers, thousands of pages, um, because all of these things are changing um, how we teach Hawaiian history, language, and culture. So really appreciate the job of everyone that um, is doing something towards this. Um, so I guess, I guess my question is, you know, at what age, what grade level? And from my my position, um, I'd bring it back to my uh, boss and we try to get that moving. Um, so mahalo, mahalo for it. You did. Mahalo Keola. All right, so uh, I would say high school for sure. However, um, there is a time when Hawaiian history is being taught, political Hawaiian history of that era. So whenever that is, that fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, whenever that is, that's age appropriate to me. I just want to thank you all. Um, there's beautiful food downstairs. I'm so sorry we don't have another hour because this is a semester class right here. I want to honor the judiciary. Um, particularly Matt Matisse for his support and Brianna back here because without without them and their support we wouldn't be here tonight and it's so important and there's so many more questions so this is the end of Hawaiian History Month and Malia I would love to just thank you for everything that you do can we please honor Malia